In case you somehow missed this news, Microsoft slash Xbox shut down four game studios this week, including Tango Gameworks, who most recently... Four game studios this week so far. We made Hi-Fi Rush, which in my opinion is the most underrated game of last year. That game is incredible. And Arcane Austin, who are known for making also a bunch of incredible games. Like obviously Redfall. a blunder with Redfall, which was their most recent release. But they also made Prey. That mm -hmm. game is so good and have worked on Dishonored. Feels weird to say because it's only two games for whatever reason, but probably one of my favorite game franchises ever. They also shut down an extra two studios that I'm not as familiar with. Uh, one of them is Alpha Dog Games, the maker of mobile game Mighty Doom and Roundhouse Studios, yeah, which is being absorbed by the Elder Scrolls Online developers, mm -hmm. Animax Online Studios. Bunch of extra context here that's important before I get into the things that I feel like I want to say today. Today, I wanted to um, go out of my way to like explain some things that I think that maybe gamers haven't realized yet that like the industry knows but gamers haven't realized yet but i'll give you more context first so the article goes on to say microsoft currently valued at over three trillion i can't even fathom that amount of money the way that i ever it's a lot that's how i know that's how much money it is it's a lot of money ever try to picture amounts of money yeah. that are unfathomable to me is like it's like a picture crazy each amount of, those of money. dollars as people in a, a large room mm -hmm. how big is the room <laughs> three trillion I don't, that's, I have no concept of how big that is. That's too big. The number is too large. They did not say. Uh, how big would the room be? The room would be about a, the size of a city. No, probably a bit more than that. Maybe like the size of a state. And by a state, I mean, I'm not talking about like some like New York or like uh, Wisconsin. I'm talking about a real state like Texas. How many staff will lose their jobs, but significant layoffs are inevitable. IGN has asked Bethesda for comment. Microsoft declined to expand further when contacted by IGN. Um, but yeah, obviously everybody seemingly at Arcane Austin and Tango has lost their jobs. Yeah. Some of those people, I believe, were folded into other developers. Mm -hmm. And some people in the actual corporate side at Bethesda were also laid off. Of course, goes without saying, this absolutely sucks. It sucks. Um, this sad. one is especially devastating to me because... A, I kind of thought that we were through it. Felt like we hadn't had layoffs in a minute. Um, if you have, in my opinion, from what I expect, I don't think that we're through it either because I don't even think it really has started. I think it's going to be getting way worse. I'm talking about way, way, way worse. What, what do you think they're going to do? Of course, this is going to happen. I haven't seen my GDC speech. I wrote this very spicy speech for this year's Game Developers Conference, mm -hmm. basically just calling out the industry for doing this. And at GDC, I feel like things felt a little more positive. Like it really did feel to me like the people thought we were through the worst of it. So A, I did not expect this and it sucks. And it sounds like from some of the reports that have come out afterwards, this might not be it. There might be more layoffs of course. coming in 2024, which is unfathomable yeah. because we've already had so many layoffs, one of the worst years in the history of the games industry. And before you tell me it's happening to other industries as well, I know that whenever I talk about this- That's people... actually a really good point uh, that they're like, yeah, this is happening everywhere. Like all kinds of tech industries are dropping people like crazy. Like if, if you can have, like you had, a, you had a job, two people were doing a job and then you can have one person do the job and with an AI that helps them do the work of two people. Well, everybody's going to do that. It's common sense. Of course that's going to happen. Every white car job has dramatically showed, slowed hiring in the last two years. Yeah, like I was calling, like so. I, I, I uh, like I was late to stream today because I was helping my dad get his phone uh, set up, and so I had to like call, and I, I didn't really have to. Like he could have done that, but I, I did it for him. So like, because I, I understand it better, and so like I called up the place, and like half the time that I spent like getting his phone authenticated and fixed and everything was spent uh, with a um, actually about like a third of it at the beginning was spent with a. Um, what do you call it? With a robot. And it used to be people that called in and then people would answer the phone and now it's just an AI. It's a robot. It's an AI agent. Yeah, and it worked. I actually, to be fair, I did do the hack. A lot of you guys might not know this. Press the pound button. Like, because it was for like, I'm going to be honest, it was a, it was a uh, phone call. It was a, like a, a phone like thing for old people. So I just started hitting the pound key over and over and over, and they put me on with the representative immediately. It took like five minutes. It's a really, really, yeah, pound or zero. Spam that. Go. Well, this is every industry. I, I get that, but I talk about video games here. I work in the games industry. Like, it's like, I'm not saying other industries don't also have layoffs. They like, do. What? Shut up. <laughs> yeah, Arcane Studios had to post. It's just, 
It's super devastating. I think the reason why people say that is that I, I think that there is a general resentment that other people in tech have or other people in general have in the workforce that like a lot of game developers are trying to get people to feel sorry for them for like getting fired, but it's probably happening to other people as well. And they feel like they're not getting the level of support that they think that they deserve. That's what I think is happening. I'm not saying it's true. I'm just saying that's why I think they're acting that way. Everybody, obviously the people affected the worst are the people who have lost their jobs. Um, but what, mm -hmm. what also gets me about this one is if you're going to shut down a studio like Tango, who just made Hi-Fi Rush, which according to posts from leadership at Xbox, was a success that reviewed very well, that's now out on multiple platforms. If these two aren't safe with a $3 trillion company backing them, nobody is safe. Nobody in the games industry is safe. No studio you love is safe. Everyone is at risk of being shut down. And that should terrify you. It terrifies me, not just as somebody who works in the games industry, but as somebody who like loves a lot of these game studios. Like this is just so fucking sad. Here's what I wanted to talk about. It's um, just what's gonna happen. Like that's it, that's just the way it is. Uh, I mean, Blizzard next, I don't know. Uh, no one was supposed to be safe. Yeah, like, I mean, I'm going to be real. Like, this is a commercial industry where you are selling to an audience. Nobody is safe. Like, I and, and maybe I'm, like, just extremely, um, what's the word for it? Like, I, I'm, like, very immune to this, of, like, the stress of it. But as a content creator, holy fuck. People lose their career all the time. It's like you can have somebody that's doing amazing. Think about all of the people that during COVID, like for like Among Us, were really popular. And now they're fucking losers and nobody cares about them. That's scary, man. That's really scary. As a content creator, like you better keep in mind, like I used to worry about that happening to me for years, years and years and years. This used to bother me. I used to be so I'm never worried. I'm not worried about it anymore. Right. But like I used to be, and it was fucking brutal. And so as a content creator, I, I hear people talking about this and I think to myself, yeah, uh, this is the way it's been for a long time. Yeah, that's it. it happens with mergers and acquisitions. Yeah, it happens with with everything, right? I mean, if you're if you are in a hyper competitive environment where you have to sell to consumers and get consumers to buy your product, nobody is safe ever. Um why this That's is it. happening and why it's only going to get worse. And there's one real big point of this that I want to discuss. I guess two. Hey, maybe even three. Who knows? So many things to say. Mostly, wow, is this fucking depressing. So the first thing, you will occasionally see a response mm -hmm. of, if they just make good games, this won't happen. Should have just made a good game mm -hmm. then. That's what happens when you make Redfall. Should have just made a good fucking video yep. game if you didn't want to get shut down. The quality of the video game is irrelevant. The quality of the video game is irrelevant. The quality of the game is not relevant. And that is a thing well, that I think is? like gamers, people who enjoy video games, myself. I think it absolutely is, personally. Because like at the end of the day, they invest a bunch of money into that game. The game doesn't sell well. It makes the company look bad. I mean, like, then what does matter? as a video game consumer should be a lot more concerned about than they are. It is time to talk about Factor, which is a meal delivery service that I've been using for well over a year now. I this is using... smart of her to do. Have a hot take that people will probably get mad about so they sit through the ad to watch the rest of the ad so they can hear what her reasoning is. That's smart. You want to start boxing yeah. and it made my life Good idea. so much easier that now I use it every single week. So if you aren't familiar, Factor is a meal delivery service that provides delicious, ready to eat meals. Every fresh, never frozen meal is chef crafted, dietitian approved, and ready to eat in just correct. 100%. two minutes. Uh, it makes good it very game easy for somebody like me who like, I feel like I always have so much to do, I'm always so busy. No. I don't have to think about what I'm gonna eat. I just heat it up, wait for it to cool down, and then eat it on the go. It saves me a ton of money because I know ordering takeout, and I know exactly what the nutritional content of the food that I'm actually eating is. I know how much protein I'm getting in a day, which is a thing that I try really hard to pay attention to. You can choose from a weekly menu of 35 options, including popular Delicious. options like Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, or Vegan and Veggie. Plus, discover more than 60 add-ons every week, like breakfast, on the go, lunch, snacks, and beverages. I thought about you... getting these, uh, like those like smoothie drinks and shit like that for drinking in the morning. Yeah, I thought about doing that. Like, maybe not this one specifically, but, like, just something like this to drink in the morning. The reason why I didn't is because, like, 
th this might sound like weird, but like I think I should work out more so I have like more muscle definition. But I like the way that I look. I like being very skinny. Like in my mind, like if I think if I visualize what am I as a person, that's what I am. Stay fueled and feel good all day. I have the add-on. But I should work out more a bit. Just right. give me an extra few ingredients sure. that I otherwise don't get in my diet. And I love them. So many of these meals taste so good. I recommend Factor super highly. So if you want to get started, mm -hmm. get 50% off your first Factor box and 20% off your next month of orders using my link. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code with your phone. Huge thank you to Factor for sponsoring the video. Now back to the video. The quality of the games. Okay, is here irrelevant. we go. Here's something that I think perfectly paints a picture of the landscape that we're in that I have had a lot of people ask me about. This is from March 5th. I am sourcing Gamer right here and it says Warner Bros. want to focus on live service games instead of one and done. I don't know. I mean, like, I like I can't see a world where, like, if Redfall sold as many copies as Pal World that they wouldn't have shut the, that they shut the studio down. I just I don't see a world where that would have happened. I feel like they shut it down because the game was massively unsuccessful. And also, like, the the truth is, too, like, it wasn't just massively unsuccessful. It hurt Microsoft and Xbox's brand as a whole because they invested a lot into Redfall and then it turned out to be Red Fail and Microsoft looks like a bunch of fucking morons. They doubled down on bad idea. Yeah, exactly. Wasn't Hi-Fi Rush super successful? Well, I'm not talking about that. And I think that also Hi-Fi Rush... I don't know how much money they made on Hi-Fi Rush. I have no idea. I, I'm not aware of what their margins are on that game. It seems like the game did really well, and I bet they probably did make some money on it. But was it enough money? I'm not sure. Nobody knows. It won awards? Who cares? <laughs> Who gives a shit about what people review the game as? Clash of Clans doesn't win awards, but you're not seeing them firing a bunch of people, probably. You're not seeing them shut down Clash of Clans. Awards. Who cares? It's about the money. Titles like Hogwarts Legacy. This came right after the failure of Suicide Squad and the tremendous success of Hogwarts Legacy. Yeah. And yet they are still choosing to go live service games instead of one and done titles that were very commercially successful. This is the I don't think that there should be a focus on live service or one and done single player games. There should be a focus on creating good product, good quality products and some good quality products work better in a live service model and other quality products work better in a single player one and done method. That's it. Like recently, I played uh, like um, I played this game, Another Crab's Treasure. Incredible, amazing game. Would one hundred percent recommend it. But it's pretty much a one and done game. I played sixteen hours of the game. I had such an incredible, great experience. Also, there are other games that are live service games that I played, and they were really fun. Like Grand Blue Fantasy Relink is kind of like it's like on the edge of like live service and not. Uh, like, let me think. New World is not really like that. No Rest for the Wicked will probably get new updates too. Like, there's no reason to... Like, I, I just, I hate this dichotomy that people create with live service and single player and one and done games as if one of them is good and one of them is bad. I, I, I hate it. It drives me crazy. It's not about that. It's never been about that. Reason quality doesn't matter, good doesn't matter. Why are they doing this? Why are they making live service games when they yeah. just had a huge flop, when Redfall just flopped? Why is there this focus on this thing that is clearly not working when mm -hmm. you could instead make something like Hogwarts Legacy, which is a huge IP that if you took the Suicide Squad uh campaign and the game just had that, it would be worse. If you removed every function of live service out of Suicide Squad, the game would have been even worse than it was. A lot of fans enjoyed it. It was the delayed because it was so bad. Emmer is getting filtered by Duchess of Slack Tide. Oh, that's the boss I one shot. Yeah, I remember that. Answer is yeah. the, the reality of the industry that we're in right now and why I think things are going to get so much worse for gamers. Mm -hmm. Every single AAA game right now is a risk. Making any game that mm -hmm. is that expensive to make is a risk. Making a Hogwarts Legacy 
huge risk. The reality yeah. of going live service, which I'm sure we're going to see so much of, instead of going for more games like Hogwarts Legacy, which again, you would have considered a success, is that it is less risky for it to fail. Hey there, Game of Future Alana here. I feel like I could have phrased this. Uh, okay. Yeah, I can see that. A little more succinctly. Both sides are risks. It's just that one risk has potentially like exponential gain. You know what I mean? Yeah, the live service. It's risky stuff. to make a triple A game, live service or single player. Both are hugely risky. It's just that the risk has more of a chance of paying off with like an infinite amount of money if you go live service. Does that make sense? Arcane could have made Dishonored. Yeah, sure. Of course that makes sense. Microsoft said it sold well. They publicly said that it hit the marks they hoped it would hit. It was a budget small term game that was for $30. Microsoft just lied about everything with Tango Games, it seems. I think that if you listen to the exact words that they use, if you had me listen to those words, it's kind of like what I said earlier with Phil Spencer, if you guys were watching then, with Phil Spencer saying a lot of people were expecting them to make this other game, but I was okay with them being doing Hi-Fi Rush. There is a lot of implication of that. And I think that it might make, it might seem like that's what they said, but if you look at the exact words they use, I think it might be something different. Like, for example, it could have made a lot of sales, but the sales were on a margin that was extremely low, so they didn't view it to be something that they thought was good of invest good investing in. That's what happens. There's a lot of ways it can make sense. It's all PR. Yeah, everything that they talk about, they're going to say it in a way that makes them look good, and it makes their decisions look good. So they're never going to come out and say something was bad unless there is nothing else that they can possibly say, like with Suicide Squad. Three, and it could have gotten 10 out of 10s, and players could have loved it. And another if... factor with this is that regardless of well, hi how well Hi-Fi Rush did or did not do in the eyes of the public, none of us have access to their balance sheets. None of us know how much money they made. And I think that if we saw those balance sheets and we saw how much money the company was making, I bet that would make a lot more sense. Or the data. Yeah, we don't know what the data is. If it didn't make an unfathomable amount of money, and that's the reality that we're in, it's like mm -hmm. just profit isn't enough. It has to be year over year profit. These companies have to make more money than they did last year because of capitalism. So She's making a very good point here, and this is a huge problem. It's not really because of capitalism. It's because of greed and the way that shareholder uh, expectations are. They're built around a quarterly profits because like there are companies like Japan, right? Like there are a lot of Japanese companies that exist in a capitalistic ec economy but they don't have this problem. Uh, I think it's culture and it's accountability. Being successful is not enough. So any mm -hmm. AAA game that you make that does not have a live service component, that doesn't have built-in battle passes, doesn't have built-in microtransactions, mm -hmm. doesn't have an option for a bunch of players who act like yeah. whales to spend a whole lot of money and continually support that ecosystem Absolutely. is a huge, huge risk. And it is a better financial bet from these companies that are businesses and see themselves as businesses at this point. They don't see themselves as creative outlets. They don't see themselves as art. The dev teams do, the publishers don't. You can have a studio make a really good- Which to be fair is kind of the publisher's job. The publisher's job is about looking at a creative project and figuring out how to make that make sense business-wise. That's part of the job of a publisher. Obviously there's a lot of other things too, but that is a big part of it. Game that is a one and done title like a Hogwarts Legacy. Yeah that people really, really like, but it's still a random risk of if it will take off or if people will play it or if enough people will spend money on it. So it is a safer bet from a business standpoint to attempt a live service game, which may be cheaper in some ways, might not be in other ways, and to potentially have it blow up and get huge and make a bunch of money from a recurring and dedicated player base than it is to take the AAA single player risk. No I think that's probably true, but there's also a bigger risk with uh, live service in terms of the product as well. Like, after the product is released, for example, Elden Ring, let's say they had a thousand people working on Elden Ring. After Elden Ring was made, they probably had 10 or 5 people working on it, or 20 people. Like, I'm just saying, like, in terms of proportions. But with something like Suicide Squad, you had a thousand people working on it, and there's probably still 200 people working on it after that, or 400 people working on it. Because live service games imply a continual investment of time and money. And that's one of the big issues is that whenever you get into a live service game, you also commit to live service. 
Like you see this happen with Diablo. This is what's happening. Like, and that's why games go end of service, which is whenever the game basically dies and they shut down the servers. So I, I think live service games in a lot of cases can actually be extremely expensive in the long term. No amount of quali quality guarantees income mm -hmm. to the level of income that they have come to expect. The live service game could fail, but it failing is still a better risk to take than making a AAA single player one and done experience at yeah. this point. The quality of the games doesn't matter. Anyone can get laid off and shut down, except for a studio. The quality of the game doesn't matter, but I bet if the company made as much money as Power World did, they wouldn't be fired. That's the truth. The quality is not relevant. It's the money that the game makes that's relevant. Because Microsoft is a business. That's the truth. And again, we don't know what the balance sheets are. I don't know. I, like, I'm not sure. Maybe she might know. I'm not sure. I don't. I don't think anybody else does either. Making a live service game that is continuously getting profit. Mm -hmm. Now we're also in a unique landscape right now that I think has just caught up to these executives. We touched on this on a stream the other night, but what you're currently in is a time war. This is a very new thing. I think COVID really kicked this into overdrive. This isn't a games industry thing anymore. This is a entertainment in general thing where they are all warring for your time. Your Xbox is also competing against your Netflix, is competing against yeah, your Twitter, is, is competing right. against your Instagram for the most amount of time they can get from you. And every Do you think the games industry is going to crash? No, I think actually the opposite. I think the games industry is doing incredibly well. Uh, but it's doing well from the perspective of a consumer. For somebody who works in the games industry, it is incredibly probably unsettling and stressful. But as a consumer of video games, I feel like we are being served extremely well. Like, there are so many new games. Like, think about it. Like... In the last week, Hades 2 has come out. Donkey's new game has come out. Who knows if that's going to be good or not. Uh, that Crab game came out. I'm pretty sure maybe two, two, two and a half weeks. Uh, maybe three weeks. V Rising finally released. Like, there's new games coming out now faster, more frequently than ever. And the quality also... Like, so this used to be the quality of AAA games. And this used to be the quality of indie games. And now... This is the quality of indie games, and I mean, to be realistic, this is probably the quality of AAA games, but even then, they are closer together. The quality of an indie game is better now than it was 10 years ago, and the quality of an indie game 10 years ago is infinitely better now, then than it was 10 years before then. And that's what I'm trying to say. The truth is that these massive studios that have these huge $100 million budgets on video games are just simply not agile enough to exist in the market that's emerging now. You're seeing these small games that are coming out that are made by just a handful of people, or in some cases, one person, and they just completely sweep the market in some cases, or they make a tremendous amount of money because people don't necessarily care about like facial movements of the characters in cutscenes. A lot of AAA studios focus on things that gamers don't actually see value in. And that's, again, going back to the, oh, it wins awards for this. Winning awards doesn't make money. You know what makes money? Selling the fucking game. That's what matters. And if you don't sell the fucking game, then nothing else matters. Every single one of these entertainment services is helps designed it, to get as much time from you as possible to prevent you from clicking away. To and generally, they're hand in hand. But don't ever forget which one comes first services is designed to get as much time from you as possible to prevent you from clicking away to make sure that once you engage you stay engaged yeah. and that is very difficult for a game that ends in 20 hours it is really hard for them to keep you coming back to that same service repeatedly day after day when you have spare time they want you to be yeah. opening up your xbox and looking at the microsoft store seeing things advertised to you or potentially spending money well this is a great example right i mean look at the bad look oh do you want to buy the dragon flight expansion oh my god you can buy this right now and then oh look at the training post again because the classics are gonna be, oh my god look at all these other games i'm gonna play these other games holy shit yes this is why these companies want their own launcher it's so they can spam you with ads it's the same thing with microsoft Sony does it. Xbox does it. Uh, everybody does it. Nintendo does it. 
Look at the epic edition. Oh my god, you gotta buy the epic edition. Oh, Jesus. Gamers also take much longer. Games also take much longer to make now. Games do take a long time to make, but there are also games that are developed quite quickly as well. I think that games take way longer to make. Like, AAA development, in my opinion, I think is too slow. I don't know why it's too slow. I've never worked in a AAA game studio. But they're taking too long. That's it. I, it, it has to be shorter. I don't know how you do this, but you have to do it. ...on microtransactions instead of spending just time on Instagram is. or TikTok. You are in an enormous time war where the most valuable currency mm -hmm. that you as a consumer have is your time, and you are competing yeah, against multi-trillion dollar corporations. What does it mean? <laughs> For your time. They are doing everything they can, throwing every resource at you that they can to consume. Don't ever get demoralized that you're competing against a multi-trillion dollar company. Just make a good game. That's it. Just make a good game that's fun and enjoyable and people will play the game. Doesn't matter how much money you have. Look at, so look at something like Undertale. Lethal Company. Vampire Survivors. Make a good game. Every second that you have. It sucks. Like, I just, I don't think Sturdy this is Valley. fixable. There I think is. that this is like Terraria. just. And yeah, the appeal of live service spans Hollow a lot of facets of the games industry, but it's really that it can steal all of your time all the time. It That's can what it does for TikTok. me. They can do something yeah. to get you to spend all of your time I do on that. it and thus potentially increase the amount of times you will spend money on that thing. It's mm -hmm. making a good game is irrelevant. Making a great story that you can play for 15 hours is irrelevant. And there is also a, a part of this that I think is completely true. Because keep in mind, do you want to hear what a good game with a great story is? I'm speaking from not experience, just from secondhand. I never played it myself. Alan Wake 2. Let me go ahead and show you guys something. So if you take a look at this, despite strong sales, the budget still has not been made back for Alan Wake 2. Alan Wake 2 still has not earned back its budget. Because you're right. The quality of the game doesn't matter. The sales of the game matter. Now, generally, quality and sales go hand in hand. Multiple reasons, because it's on Epic. They decided to put it on Epic. It's not like it's on Epic Game Store or like, you know, they flipped a coin. This was a, this was a business decision that they made. They want as much of your time as possible. Mm -hmm. Think about what you do with your time. Yeah. So a couple of other facets of this that I want to touch on. And this is a very doom and gloom video. I know it is. I'm just really I love sad. These. Like, I feel like I'm watching an industry that I love die. Single player games are not dying. Like, that's not, it's not happening 100% across the board. There's still a lot of value. There, it's not happening at all. The idea that single player games are dying is just not true. The problem with single player games is that Hogwarts Legacy, I think, was like kind of like, you know, there was like the J.K. Rowling drama, the whole like transphobia shit. The game looked really good. It was one of the first games that was made with like that high definition, like Unreal 5 style graphics at the time. And it also was a good game. So all of these things come together. And guess what happens? Uh... <laughs> People are going to buy the game. And also, like, uh, Harry Potter is one of the biggest IPs in the entire world. I, I feel like it's probably one of the best I IPs, the, bo the best-selling IP, probably ever. So, yeah, maybe more than, maybe not as much as Star Wars, but it's pretty damn close. People love Harry Potter, right? So, in a general sense, there are a lot of single-player games that are massively successful. Absolutely. But the problem is that if you're investing $200 million or $100 million into a single-player game, you have less points that you can monetize on because you can't sell a battle pass for it. You can't make that money back. And so, like, uh, it's it's a different type of challenge. For those, for certain companies, like, that's not, I'm not... Everyone's reality not shifting in Harry Potter? Well, yeah, think about thing. what Everyone's that says. For a long time. But obviously, there is an overwhelming shift in that direction, okay? So, like, I'm not saying they're Pokemon all gone. Yeah, it's just a WB a third party publisher especially, you're probably going to see more of them make the changes that they've just said that they're going to make. That's it. Because it's less financially risky. So the second part, see a lot of people say, time for indies to rise up. The indie space has got it. Indies are going to kill yes. it. Let's keep playing indies. They're the creative ones anyway. I have terrible news for you, my uh -oh. friend. Things are just as bad in the indie space. Indie studios shut down all the time. You just don't hear about them because yeah. you haven't heard of them. It makes news headlines when Arcane Well, I think it's true that indie games are popping up more regularly. And like we're seeing more successful indie games now than I think five years ago. And I think that like if you look at the 
the amount of them that are coming out and the amount of them that are successful, you're seeing a higher success rate of indie games because I think indie games now have way more tools to make games better. Like, I, my understanding is that the crab game that I played was developed by 13 people. Is that correct? Someone says 11 people. There it is. I bet 10, 15 years ago that would not have been possible. It's down. It doesn't make news headlines when the mm -hmm. indie studio you haven't heard of shuts down. Facet of the industry is no less volatile than AAA is right now. They're in the same place. In fact, it's oh, it really is. hard for indies to get publishers right now. It's very difficult mm -hmm. for indie games to get funded right now. The indie space being some haven where this is not happening. and they This is one of the reasons why we do Pixel Pitch, right? Because, like, we know that, like, obviously, because Mad Mushroom and, you know, like, we've published games at this point and we're doing that. Uh, it's rough, man. It is. It is really fucking hard. And the problem is that a lot of people, like, people have good ideas for games, but there are like so many other things that need to happen in order for that game to actually finally get finished. Especially if you're like a solo dev or you've only got three people working on it. If one of those people has something come up in their life and they can't work anymore on the game, the game could just be dead. So like just the the day to day, like just keep putting, you know, one foot in front of another is so hard to do. Yeah, money. And also a lot of them don't have money. Creatively expressive, not That's true, the thing. unfortunately. A lot of indies are falling right now as and well. We and we also, continue we're, to we're trying to, like, I, I don't want to promise anything, okay, guys? But, uh, like, there's a good chance that we'll be able to increase the money that we can give people and, and developers uh, for these games. We're, we're going to keep being able to do this more. Uh, I think a lot of people, like, uh, this is probably me oversharing, but a lot of people, like, in terms of, like, industry people have really been happy about it and people that are like involved in investing and stuff so people that actually have the money right uh very very happy about it and so there's a good chance that that's going to happen well right now as well there are some triple a game devs who've like been talking about leaving triple a mm -hmm. and going to indie to save this and every time that i see that i'm like dude please talk to people who actually work in the indie space before you like jump ship and leave AAA to go straight to indie. Because while they will fight harder to keep everybody, like indies have a lot less people. So the individual people are more valuable, paid less, but more valuable usually. They're less likely to lay people off because they're more likely to shutter the whole project. Indie is no yeah. more safe. Indie is absolutely no more safe right now. The third point is to the response of what about Baldur's Gate 3? People will say, what about a Baldur's Gate 3? What about Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom? These are certainly still games that are going to come out and will still exist. And studios that have huge legacies, a FromSoft can get away with this. Well, I mean, come on. Like, I mean, no. Didn't Sven from uh, Larian say that he had to, like, take out extra loans and they were basically living on, on a prayer with Baldur's Gate 3 on the development? He said, like, yeah, I had to keep taking out loans and... You know, like, we didn't know if we'd be able to have the studio space in, like, two weeks. Like, bro, they were they were on the razor's edge. Yeah, same with No Man's Sky? Exactly, yeah. Thought that was for Divinity? Well, if it was, then it's the same thing. Divinity was very successful, too. Yeah, they went bankrupt a few times? Yeah, that's bad. A Larian can get away with this. A Nintendo can get away with this. They have huge legacies, big IP. I think also whenever people say like different IPs and different companies can get away with it, there's like definitely a really big survivorship bias because there are a lot of companies that try to get away with it and then they don't. And very focused leadership that is almost fighting against the climate. Those games mm -hmm. are still going to exist, but they are exceptions. And so what I'm saying is the only way to get a Baldur's Gate 3 or an Elden Ring is to be a studio with a huge legacy, with a very experienced, knowledgeable team, and usually an IP, usually. Because for vast majority of studios who tried to do what Alarian did with Baldur's Gate 3, it's going to shut up the studio. It's not yeah, going it, it, Yeah, I mean, it, it 100%. Going to work. That risk is too high, it, they are going to fail, and they are going to shut down. And Sven, the head of Larian, has said so many wonderful things. His GDC acceptance speeches, um, his Game Awards acceptance speeches, where he's just calling out the industry for being greedy and for not having to do what they're doing. He's 100% right. Like, the industry is choosing to shut these studios down. They're lying to you when they're saying it's a necessity. It's a choice. It's a choice. She's right about this. I think that the reason why the studios do it is because they want to save money. I don't think that it's a necessity either. And I think that's the problem with, like, 
that's kind of what I was talking about with like uh, at least like some some of like the Japanese culture, it seems like with these other companies that they are more willing, like there isn't a constant fixation on making more and more and more money. It's like at a certain point you're doing well and things are OK. But over here, that's just not the way things are. That's why you tried to remain independent. Yeah, maybe. Because the profits are not high enough. The area where it is yeah, a necessity there it is. is that they just answer to the stock market. It's not like it's a group of people in a room sitting there and, and, and being individually evil and saying, let's fucking mm -hmm. tank the whole games industry, live service, let's get as much money as possible. Like, it'd be way easier if that was true. But really, it's just a bunch of people whose jobs it is to appeal to shareholders, to appeal to the stock market, just doing that because that it's... Their whole job is to make sure Arrow go up. And like, even if one of those executives were to look at a Baldur's Gate 3 and be like, huh, that did really well. Let's well, would you, like, I mean, well, let's be realistic, right? Would you want to invest in something like Baldur's Gate 3? The, another game that would have the same potential as that? Probably not. Because it's so risky. It's d insanely fucking risky. It's crazy. So, yeah, no, I, I, you can't blame them for that. Try and do that. The next executive next to them would slap them because mm -hmm. any live service game that is successful is infinitely more successful. It will be. It's so much more successful than Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah. It makes so much more money that why would you make even the... the... Yeah, I bet Honkai Star Rail makes infinitely more money, like, like multiplicative numbers more money than Baldur's Gate uh, 3 makes. The single player experience that was expensive close. when you could make the live service game that's expensive that has more potential gain right i'm sorry about this video um so what do you do what do you what do you do the only thing i think you can do is buy games you like think about what you put your time that's, to yeah exactly if you want to support a studio just buy the game buy the game and get your friends to buy the game whenever i see a game come out and I feel like it's a good game, I'll play the game on my stream. I'll try it out. I'll see if it's any good. Yeah. And buy games you like. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have a lot of positive shit to say for you. Um, this is, it's, it's bad. It, the things don't make mm -hmm. enough money and the risks are too big. That's my nice um, uplifting video for today, you guys. Wow. Hope you all feel great. I'm just really sad. I'm just really sad. If, you fuck, if you're gonna fucking shut down Tango, Hi-Fi Rush was so good, and it just... What's the point? What the fuck are we doing? By the way, I'm so sorry that I had to put an ad read in this video. I had to for time reasons, like it was required. Um, that... Also... Oh. So, here, here's really where we're at. It's like, just... Here, here, here's reality. The games that, like, Hi-Fi Rush, we don't know how much money Hi-Fi Rush made. We don't know what the money is. We don't know what the balance sheet says. I don't know what it says. But I bet the people at Microsoft know what it says. I bet they have an idea. And I don't know about this. But the fact that they haven't kicked 343 Studios to the curb when they probably should have for Halo makes me think that maybe that studio wasn't making as much money as they made people believe it was. They know every detail. They know everything about it. Game Pass, day one, kills sales. I'm sure it does. I I'm sure, but there's probably... Don't you think that they have a way to, like, itemize the value of a game bringing people to Game Pass? They obviously have a way to do that. They're tracking everybody's behavior on Game Pass at all times through, like, 50 different algorithms. Like, it, it, this is Microsoft, guys. Like, this is a multi-trillion dollar company. Of course they have that. So if the game has a tremendous amount of players on Game Pass, then that's going to be amortized or, like, weighted against its bad sales. Of course that's what they're going to do. Yeah, they probably do, to be honest. Well, I mean, no. It's like if you were making Game Pass, would you do that? Of course you would. Would you want to figure out what games are people playing on Game Pass? Of course you'd want to know that. So th think about what Microsoft is doing. They're probably so much farther ahead of that. Yeah, they get out money front for the contract. Yeah, exactly. 
If they don't release on Game Pass, no one would know if the game even got popular in the first place. Well, it depends, right? Hi-Fi Rush sold 2 million, which is not bad, Sag, and also Game Pass. It might not be bad, but we don't know what the margin on that money is. If you sell 2 million copies and you make $3 every copy, that's $6 million. Is that a lot of money? Yes. Is that a lot of money for Microsoft? Maybe not. So yeah, I'm 30. No, I, that's that's I'm talking about profit, right? How much money are you are you actually making back? Yeah, they budgeted 20 million, so no. Yeah, I don't know. The so companies uh know that they're going to get sued and do it anyways. I mean, if you're going to finish Hi-Fi Rush, it's a fun game. I might finish it. I don't know. I mean, I thought the game was good. It wasn't amazing. Like I thought it was it was just a, it was a good solid game. I like the game. There's nothing I really thought was problematic about it. I'm not really much into rhythm games, okay? Like, I'm a white guy. I don't have any rhythm. So, it's not my thing. However, um, you know, I think the game's quality. It's a good game. I'll link you guys the video. Uh, I think she brings up some good points, but I also think that... I think that this would have never happened if Hi-Fi Rush sold as many copies as Pal World. I think it would not have happened if Redfall was successful. If Redfall was as successful as Helldivers 2, that company would not have been ended. That's just it. It wouldn't have happened. Who decides what's a good game before it releases? Uh, I mean, I get sent out to reviewers. People are able to see videos of it. People make a decision. That's all there is to it. So, yeah. Uh, but they can't be successful with the current climate and format. I don't know why they can or can't be successful. Like, at the end of the day... The company isn't going to care. Like, I mean, they should, but they're probably not going to care about that. It, it doesn't really matter. Like, you can come up with as million as many reasons that you want for why you didn't succeed, but the bottom line is going to be that you didn't succeed. That's the only thing that matters at the end of the day. And if you don't meet the market demand, if you're not bringing home the bacon, then you're done.